So, a cube's real easy, right? Shouldn't be any problem. Because what do you know about the faces of a cube? They're all the same. So if you know one face, do you know all the faces? Right. How big is that one face? It's a square, so it's LW, which is 5 by 5, which is 25. But there's six of those faces, so the surface area is 150. Meters what? Squared. Why is it squared? It's a three-dimensional figure. Because it's surface area. An area only has how many dimensions? Two. Two. Now, this, and I warned you of this yesterday. I said 90 degree. There's two ways you could do this. One you could recognize that this is half of a rectangular prism, yes? So you could have done this whole prism and cut the area in half, right? But that wouldn't give you the right answer because what did you make here when you cut that prism in half? A whole different surface. So if you did cut it in half, you would have needed to add this green rectangle. Everybody understand? Yeah, yeah. The other way you can do it, and the way that always works, is of course you can add up all the sides that you see. This, oops, that's a bad color to use because it's black, and that is black. This is a triangle, yes? It's not racist to say the word black. Good God, people. I am also going to use the color brown in this class. It is not racist. I am also going to use the color white in this class, which is, of course, not racist, because any time you're racist towards white people, that's okay, because, you know, it's our fault first. Um, well, it's true. Anytime anybody does anything that is racially motivated against a white person, it's because we deserve it. Right? You can't respond because I'm right. I don't know what that means. I, I don't know. That. It, of course it's true. It's not debatable at all. Anytime you make a decision based on racial characteristics, you are being racist. It doesn't matter what color the person is, and it doesn't matter that that person may or may not be white. If I went to a country where the majority of the people were, I'll use the racist colors, brown, like when I, if I were to go to India and I were to not get a job because they wanted somebody who could, oh, say, maybe speak the languages that are available to be spoken in India, and I cannot, and I did not get that job because I am white, because I don't speak that language, that is racism. End of discussion. But nobody would care because I'm a white guy, and, you know, I've been living 40,000 40, years of privilege. So it's okay to be racist to me because I'm white. But it's not. No racism is okay. Yes, but in Canada, when people say that, they still get in trouble for racism. Right? Like for not being able to speak English? Not, no, not even not being able to speak English. Two people come to take a job. They are exactly the same qualifications. But one person, English is their first language, and they speak it perfectly. The other person is learning English and isn't as fluent. Yeah. If that is not as fluent English speaker doesn't get the job, that not as fluent English speaker would be more than capable, more than allowed to say, I did not get the job because of my, the cultural aspects I bring to that job. And everybody would like, wow, man, you can't do that. Of course it's true, but it's okay as long as the majority person, wherever it is, because that majority person is part of the privileged majority and they're okay. You can say anything you want to them. Right? Nobody gets mad if you tell a joke about some dumb Canadian farmer because it's, and there are jokes like that. Some, the dumb farmer did this. 
that's okay. Change that word, those words dumb farmer to any cultural reference, you're a racist pig and you get fired. Why is it okay? Nobody has an answer because it's not okay. But yet we all do it. I'll give you another example. If a German kid came into this classroom and everybody started talking about, hey, do you have bratwurst this morning for breakfast? Which is a perfectly normal thing. People do that all the time. Everyone would be like, oh, that's funny. German sausage, bratwurst. But if a new kid from India came into the school and somebody said, give me an Indian dish quick. I can't think of one. Did, no, butter chicken doesn't count. Butter chicken was invented by British people. No, a real Indian dish. Chicken biryani, perfect. Oh, did you have chicken? And you could say, oh, did you have bratwurst this morning? Everybody like, oh, that's funny. But if I were to say to her, oh, did you have chicken biryani this morning? Look at how mad you all are. Right? Right? It, Suhani, that's not what's important here. What's important here is you people have been so indoctrinated in the other side meaning children, Ganika, not. You guys have been so indoctrinated into the other side of racism, this fake racism that you think exists, that if I go so far as to call Mr. Fuji Mar Mr. Fujimura a Japanese Canadian, a Japanese man, people are like, oh my God, you racist. <laughs> I know that. But describing him by his racial characteristics, always somebody in the class says, oh my God, how could you say that? always and it's crap same thing with mr abraham who's mr abraham he's the, fo the football coach i don't know the football coach he's the math teacher down the hall i don't know who teaches math down the hall then a second i say he's the black teacher oh mr abraham now everybody knows who he is it's allowed you can do that because it's true what i know you wouldn't but if I'd done it with that accent, it's racist. But plenty of people do that stuff. What if a British person came to class and I started going, oh, pip, pip, jolly good. Did you have uh, crumpets and scones for breakfast? <laughs> right? That's how you actually say the word scone. It's scones. Canadians and Americans have ruined it and said scone. At any rate, that would be considered fine. Right? French person comes here. Oh, did you have some brie for breakfast? Le petit déjeuner, a little bit of brie and some croissant? Perfectly okay. Why? French people are white. So it's okay. Change it to anybody else? Racist bastard, fire him. Right? Why? I can stop it and not put this on YouTube. But I have no problem saying because it it's all true. But no one's allowed to talk about it. The reason that we have these problems is because everyone is scared to talk about it. I'm not. I have very little fear of anything. <laughs> what? That's the other reason. My own students, who it actually matters to, don't watch it. All right. So, the purple triangle right there. Purple. Nobody is purple colored, so I'm okay there. The purple triangle. How many of them are there? Two. Two. So, isn't there on the back side of this another purple triangle? Yes. So, can't I just do six times eight to cover both triangles? Right, because it makes a rectangle. That's 48. Now, do I know? I'll have to choose another one. Orange. Nobody's orange. <laughs> do I know the length and width of that one? No. I know the width is 7. Do I know the length? No. Can I find the length? Yeah, yeah. How? Pythagoras. The length is, of course, 10. So the orange guy is 10 by 7, which is 70. Right? Now, now we get into trouble. 
because up till now, very rarely in your math classes are you dealing with things that you can't see. The first time when you learned area back in grade four, you could see the shapes. Your teacher would draw it, she'd give you a nice rectangle, tell you that was four, that was seven. You would tell her the area was 28 units squared and you get your gold star, right? Yes. That is not the way the real world is. In the real world, I had peach on my lip. In the real world, sometimes you have to think. And of course, in this triangle, this triangular prism, of course... There is a bottom red rectangle that you couldn't see. <laughs> Which is how big? Eight by seven to get 56. And there was... a green rectangle up this side that you couldn't see, which is what? Six by eight, which is 48. Wouldn't it be seven? Yeah, be seven. Oh, sorry, seven, yeah, because I erased, thank you. Seven, which is 42. Now, what are you gonna do with all those numbers? Add them up, Add them up. easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, 90, 160, 216 centimeters squared. Now, listen, please. Was the math ever difficult? No. no. Six times eight. We learned that in grade three. Five. You learned multiplication before grade five. Yes, you did. Okay, I have a child in the seventh grade. It wasn't so long ago. I know when multiplying started. At any rate. And then after you have done four multiplies, you do adding, which you learned in kindergarten. Yes, you did learn adding in kindergarten. Your teacher just didn't call it addition. So, what made this question even the tiniest bit difficult? It's not the math, right? It's, you got to see what's going on. So this one's easy, yes? One second, Ganika, go ahead. Everybody's talking. I want everybody else to stop so I can hear you. But I'm going to have a bite of peach. Carry on. Go. Okay. My ears work even though I'm biting peach. All right. So, like, we did, like, six times eight and all these numbers multiplied with digits. Well, aren't we supposed to multiply by, like, two because there's two, like... There isn't. But, but the six times eight, there's, like... But there isn't. There's only that back rectangle there. Where does it exist again? But there isn't. You can see there isn't one in the front. There is no wall that is six by seven out here, is there? Okay, this one. There is not another one of those either. Because there's the back and the bottom. That doesn't exist anywhere else. The black one is a triangle, right? There's one on the front and one on the back. So a triangle is six by 8 divided by 2, right? But there's two of them. So what happens to the twos? So the 6 by 8 covers the front and the back. No problem. All right, now, if you are not very hot at... Oh, I can't move it because I've got a stupid projector today. If you are not very hot at surface area... You can always add up the sides. You don't ever need a formula, except with cones. Okay? You never need a formula, except with cones. 
because you can always add up the sides. Every single one of you who has gotten through grade apparently four in Canada knows how to tell me the area of that green rectangle. What is it? 36. Everybody who's gotten through grade four in Canada can tell me the area of that purple rectangle. What is it? 12. Everybody who's gotten through grade four in Canada can tell me the area of that blue rectangle. What is it? 48. And what are you going to do with those three numbers? You're going to add it up to get 96. And then you're going to multiply it by two. Because how many blue rectangles are there? Two. How many green rectangles are there? Two. How many purple rectangles are there? Two. And you're going to get an answer of 192. That's if you are going to go step by step. Now, we give you formulas as well. If you look on your data booklet, you will see there is a formula right there. W-H-L-W-L-H. And it even gives you a picture to say, make this one W, make this one L, and make this one H. Right? So if I go back to where I was working, I would make this one W, this one L, and this one H. And then I can fill in my formula if you wish to use formulas, which is 2 WL plus HL plus HW, or whatever order it is. And then you just take those numbers and put them in here, and you will get the same answer. For some reason, this unit causes difficulty, even though the only math you are doing is adding up rectangles or filling in a formula. The other problem I have with this unit is in about five days when the test is about to happen, I'm going to get 10 of you coming in here telling me, oh, Mr. Ars, I can't do this. Even though every single time I do a question, I'm going to stop and say, is everyone okay? I'm okay. And all of you are going to sit there quietly. You're not going to say yes. You're not going to say no. Can I sit here for the rest of the year waiting for you to say yes or no? No. So what is the only assumption I can make if everybody does not say that they are not okay? What is the assumption that I must make in order to have school work? I must assume that you are okay. And that is what I plan to do. If you have yet to figure out that I will answer every single question that you have about anything to do with life in this room, because I am not scared, then you do not know me very well yet. All right? Ask. If you can't ask, I can't help because I can't read your minds because that's the worst superpower you could ever have. Thank you. We didn't do much after that. We did background to surface area, so he probably didn't miss much. I think I recorded it, but we didn't do anything new, so he doesn't need to worry. Okay? All right. Now we get into something slightly more difficult. If you are really struggling, you can always break it up. How many of those blue rectangles would there be? Times two. How many of those yellow rectangles would there be? Well, you know there's two, right? How many of those green rectangles would there be? Again, two, two. How many of these purple rectangles would there be? At least two, right? Because we're only, right? We're not, if people can see that there's four, Doya, then I don't need to be going in this step, right? And then finally, I'm out of colors. Uh, how many of these orange guys are there? Three, right? Just, I know Preston, but if you see that, there are people that don't. So I got to start from the beginning, right? There's three of them. And then finally, there's the whole bottom rectangle, right? That's all the sh rectangles that make up this shape. If you can do length times width that many times, can you do the surface area of this shape? Yes. Now, Let's do a little, let's apply some thought to it. Isn't 
everything blue here the exact same as the bottom? Of course it is. So you didn't need to do three of them. You could have still done the bottom times two, right? That's one way you could have thought about it. Here's another way you could have thought about it. If I just gave you that, isn't that the same as this? Not the same numbers, but it's the same, right? Okay. So this is what, if I gave you this, you could all do this in your sleep, right? Then I added this, correct? Isn't that part of This, it is, isn't it? So when I pull that bit up here, all I have done is add this square, right? How many times? Twice? One, two, three, four. This part, which I will color in red, this part we already got on the bottom. Does everyone understand? So if I were to do just the bottom one using this red formula, notice I use red to be red, I would know everything that I am coloring right now, wouldn't I? That red formula would give me everything red on here, yes? Everyone agree? Then all I need to do is find this green guy how many times? However many times, whatever I have added to the original shape. Is everybody with me? All right. So if I were going to do the red formula on the bottom, two, W, H. Okay, we're going to label it this way. There's L, there's W, what's H? It's tricky. What's H? Why is H 4? Because 12 is divided into 3, meaning each of these is 4, right? And those lines mean what? They're all the same. So my H is 4. So WH plus HL plus LW, and then I just fill it in. 2. WH, the way I've set it up, is 4x4. Four four. I'm going to just go trust that my pre-diploma students can do 4x4 four four in their head, and I'm going to write 16. Are we okay with that? Yeah. Plus HL, 4 times 12, 48. Plus LW, 12 times 4, 48. Then I'm going to add it up. 96 and 16 is 112 times 2 is 224. Agreed? Now, the only thing I haven't counted is that, which is, we know is four by four. And then I look, oh, hey, that's four, and that's four. So that's four by four too, isn't it? So the only thing I haven't counted, and I'll write in green, is four by four. And how many of them are there? Four of them, which is 64. And I add it up to 260, 288. Please notice, I have practiced this for a long time. I can do it in two steps. A great many of you are going to want to start with each little piece. Now, some of you are going to want to do that grade nine thing that you were taught. I don't like that grade nine thing, but I'll show you. That grade nine thing says you have two separate things. Shapes here, yes? You have a rectangle prism. Rectangle prism. And this is a cube. So you have the surface area of figure one plus the surface area of figure two, but you are missing this overlap, right? 
which means it has to be subtracted because it's not there. How many times must it be subtracted? Once? Twice. Because you're losing it on the little cube up top and on the little cube on the bottom. Does everyone understand that? Does everybody remember seeing that in the ninth grade? Maybe. I taught none of you in the ninth grade, so I do not know what you are bringing to this party. So I have shown you everything. You, you just saw it on Facebook and joined because it was a friend of a friend of a friend's invite. I hate those people. <laughs> now, Adrian, I got that paper towel because those teachers are good. All right, what? Yeah. Is everybody good? Can I get into your head, move your brain around so you can see this the way I see it? No. Can you learn the way I see this stuff? Yes. Do you have to? No. This is an elementary school. You can think about this any way you want. Can you bring pencil crayons into your test and shade every shape and add it up? Yes. If you want to take... Yeah, well, let's all do one. All right. Is that allowed? (laughs) What is the only currency that you lose if you color in everything? Time. You only lose time. Will I ever punish you with time? How many? Which exam? Possibly. But up until then, will I ever punish you with time? The quiz I'm about to give you, I've already told you, is 12 questions long. It should take you... At most, one, one minute per question. That's 12 minutes. At most, I'm going to give you 15. And then what's going to happen at 15 minutes? I'm going to do what every teacher does. Who needs more time? And some of you are going to put your hand up. Right? And that's okay. So I do not care if you learn to see these the way I see them. But I do care that you can understand that every three-dimensional shape is just made up of other two-dimensional shapes. So you can always get out your highlighters or pencil crayons or whatever you need and color it in and do it the long way. I don't care. Everybody good? Great. So these ones are getting slightly more complicated, yes? Thank you. This guy right here, this guy right here, is there a formula for this shape? No. So you have to figure out how you're going to attack the question. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think that I attack every question the same way? No. I choose, the, I look at the question, think about what I need to do, and then choose my method of attack. This one, because this is a triangular prism and there's no real formula for it, if I were doing this one, I would do the oldest fashioned way possible. I would go side by side and add it all up. But before I wrote anything down, I would look at what I was dealing with. How many of these yellow ones are there? Times two. So if I find yellow, I got to multiply by two. How many of these purple ones are there? So if I find purple, I got to multiply by two. How many of these green ones are there? One. Because this one is not there. Then I would look at this orange triangle. How many of them are there? Two, and then I would say to myself, self, aren't two triangles one rectangle? So I would just do a rectangle for that orange one. I would make a note to myself that I was going to do a rectangle. 
Then I would look at, I've used purple, orange, I haven't used blue. How many of them are there? One. Right? And then finally, how many of this dark purple one are there? One. Now that I have my course, my method of attack, I would start working at it because everything there is a rectangle, yes? So let's go. The green guy is how big? Three by three. That covers the green guy. Right? Okay. What's purple? Eight by three. Eight by three by two, because I've already written there's two of them. What's yellow? Yellow. Yeah, you do. It's eight by three. By two. What's blue? Four by three by? No, there's only one of them. What's purple? Dark purple. How do you know that's five? Because you use Pythagoras. Excellent. Five by three. Um, and what's orange? Four by three. And I only need to do one rectangle. That gives me the answers. And then I just add them up. Yeah, it makes it a little hard to see. Three by three is nine. Eight by three by two is 48. Eight by three by two is 48. Four by three is 12. Five by three is 15. Four by three is 12. And then I add it up. 96, 105, 117, 129, 139, 144. And it's just like that. Please understand, you must bring, and I'm going to continue to use this metaphor, you must bring a mathematical toolbox to every question. All right? If your toolbox only has a hammer in it, in real life, then what is the only problem you can solve? Nailing into a substance. Is there more things in the world that you might need a tool for? Yes. Fill your mathematical toolbox. The orange one. Okay. The orange one is this rectangle here, yes? Or this triangle here, yes? Which we know has 90 degree in it because I put it there. You know that's four and you know that's three. Right? Okay. So you also know there's two of them, yes? Which means there's Three and four right there. Two triangles make a rectangle. I did the bottom and the top at the same time. Okay? Now, F is the hardest question I've given you, and there's a reason I gave you three or five up to then that weren't too bad. Which part of F causes the trouble? Just the triangle. Everything else is easy, right? How many of those blue guys? Two. Two. How many of those yellow guys? Two. Two. How many of those purple guys? Two. Two. How many of those... How many of the bottom? One. One. All rectangles. Easy peasy, right? Then we add it all up, yeah? Okay. Now, the triangles is where we have to think. So I've told you, you know that's eight, and you know they're the same, right? Everyone agree? So you triangles are base times height divided by two, aren't they? And we know there's two of them, yes? So cancel. So if I know the base times height of this triangle, I'm in business, aren't I? Now, some of you will say, well, can't we turn it this way? 
and get base and height. Can I? There's one reason why I can't. That's not a 90. That's not a 90. So I'm screwed over there, right? But can I do that? What did I just make? I made a 90, didn't I? How long is this part? Four, right? Okay. Does that help me? It does, because how long is this part? It's going to be five, because five, five. So now, do I now know the height? What is it? Three, why? Because of Pythagoras, our best friend, the smartest, or the most important mathematician in Western civilization, in my mind. Not the most important person in all of math. In my mind, the most important person in all of mathematician is a mathematician whose name escapes me right now from India who invented the concept of zero. No. We had zero long before 1948. I can't remember the dude's name, but that dude didn't come along until like the year 800. So they were doing math for thousands of years without a concept of zero. Made math difficult. So now we know that's three. So now our triangle has a base of eight and a height of three. What is it? 24. Why is it 24? Isn't it based on site divided by two? It is, but there's two of them. Everybody understand? So then all I do... Now again, when I look at this, I say to myself, self... There's no formula for that, so I got to look at the individual faces on the roof. Could I do a formula for down here? Could I go 2 WHHLW, but then just subtract 8 by 15? That would give me the whole bottom, wouldn't it? Different tool to attack the problem. Do I care what you do? No. No. What's the best way to get good at these now while you're learning? Practice Practice and talking. I'm watching you guys talk and I can hear you talk while I'm talking. You are saying what we are doing, but you're talking about it differently than I'm talking about it, which is awesome. That's why I haven't told any of you to shut up who are talking while I'm talking because you are talking about what we're talking about. Now, how many people would appreciate a few moments to look at G and H and number two, now that we've talked a little. Go. We are, we are stopping here today. There will be no homework for the weekend and no new notes. Yes, please do, McKenna. Yes, Preston. Yep. Like with that one, couldn't you just like make another one and then like cut them in half and then put like that piece there and that piece there to make a rectangle? Like, and then, yeah. You then could, but you are in, they're all the same sides, but you are in no way guaranteed these are all 90s. Because couldn't you make a rhombus where they were all the same size? Yeah, you can't do that. Can't, oh, okay. right? But I like the way you're thinking. Now, if I had put this here, then you could have, except I can't put that there if that's five. Yeah. Because then I would have had a right angle triangle with five and five. Five squared and five squared is 50. This would have been the square root of 50. But it isn't the square root of 50. It's eight. Okay. Right? Yeah. Sometimes when I'm doing this course... I make it a right angle, so you have, but I don't give you, I don't give you this distance. You have to figure it out, and you have to make it the square root of fifty, and then do all this with the square root of fifty, which is seven point one or whatever. Right? Sometimes I do that. This year I did it. Thank you. Suhani, where? 
Where does paint go in a room? Only on the walls. How tall is the room? No. Nor do you put it on the floor. Are you still confused? Yes. Okay. What next? For the answer, you get a wall number. 300 square feet. What's the room measured in? Our meters feet? See you later. Brendan, what do you need, brother? Um, what's the answer to the last one? I'm not sure. The paint? The paint question? No, this last one. Oh, I don't remember. I'd have to do it. Oh, okay. I'm going to go over it right now, though. Okay, let me know, because I have, like, well, seven people with different answers. You'll see. What? Of course he's not. Look in this room. Is there paint up there? There could be. It could be a stylish choice. No. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to eliminate a million questions and arguments. When you are doing the paint question, he is only painting his walls. He is not painting the ceilings because painting the ceiling sucks. And you never paint the floor. Think of your house. Is any of your floor painted? It has carpet or tile or hardwood or laminate. What doesn't it have? Paint. Your ceiling has paint, but that's why I'm telling you he's only painting his walls. I don't know, is it? Of course it should be. Why? Because they're different. One's a squared and one's not. Of course we are, Miss Paget. Pull up a chair. Excellent. That's okay. exactly what I wanted. Now, if you want to split it the other way, because you split it up and down, right? So now, you're looking at this. How many yellows are there? Two. Two. Times two. How many greens are there? Uh, like three. Or no, dang it, yeah. Times two. two. We're only looking at this side, right? Yeah, yeah. How many back here. One. There's only one, right? Mm -hmm. And that will cover the whole big thing except oh, that, oh, right? You can just uh, divide that by two, can you? Well, here's what I'm going to suggest to you. Okay? If you split it this way. Watch this. Isn't that just a rectangular prism? So couldn't I just do 2WLWH, the whole formula? Okay. Now, if I did that, then doesn't that cover both of these? Doesn't it cover both of those? So the only thing that's missing here, if I filled it all out, is this rectangle right here, correct? Because that's not there. I cut that out, right? Yeah. Well, the two of them. Yeah, two of them. So if I did this whole thing as WL... Bye, have a good weekend. Be safe. See you on Monday. If I did the two WLWH, blah, 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 mm -hmm. and I subtracted that and that, would I have the answer? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean by thinking about it differently. Okay. Right? If I did that, and I'll do it again. I'll erase it so it's actually easy to see. If I come to here and I make the whole thing, then that is 2 WHL, uh, 22 by 2 plus uh, 2 by 6 plus 22 by 6. Wah! That was my fat arm hitting the mouse. 22 
22 by 6, right? Mm -hmm. 22 by 2 is 44, plus 12, plus 22 by 6 is 120, and 12, 132. Uh, 44 and 12 is 156, and 132 is 288, right? Mm -hmm. By 2 is, uh, would be 600 minus 24, 576, yes? Yeah. That would be this whole thing. But it isn't that whole thing because we're missing that bar right there, mm -hmm. which is 11 by two, 2 by 11, and we're missing two of them. So it would just be 2 times 11 times 2. Right. So I'm actually 22 times 2 is 44. I'm subtract 44 from there. Okay. okay. I did this math wrong somewhere because I did it in my head, but it's the same thing. Okay. Right? Just depends on how you think about it. Well, Catherine Newfeld. Oh, I have an ortho appointment. Bye, Catherine. Miss Padgett. Wait a minute. So you got 530. Yeah, I just did the math wrong, so I was doing it in my head. So let's check it, right? Six by 22. Oh, I see what I did wrong. It's six by 22 by four, right? Right? The whole rectangle would have been by 4. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I would have had 6 by 22 plus 6 by 4 plus uh, 6 by 4 plus Is that like a little shortcut because like, that's how many 22 like, by 4. Bases? Well, I, yeah, because Could any this students involved in the grad prank See Mr. Dweedoff in A211. What? Leadership students involved in the grad. So, grade 12s that were leadership A211. students. Oh, no, Thank I don't you. Know what the prank is. They put a bunch of solo cups in the. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, um, if I had the whole prism, it would be 6, 4, and 22, right? And I could do the formula 6 by 22. 132 plus 24 plus 88, right? Right? 244. But I got to remember to multiply that by 2, right? Yeah. To get 488, right? But I don't actually have the whole prism, no, do I? You're missing I'm missing these two green bars, yes? They aren't there. Right? Now that green bar is 2 by 11, right? Yes, friend. And there's two of them. So it's 22, 2 by 11 times 2, which is 44, right? And they're missing. So I subtract out the 44, and look, lo and behold, I get the same answer as if I did the long way and added up every single face. You will get the same answer. It will just take a lot longer. For that way? Yes. I think that part is easier. I like to think of this. I like to simplify it to what's easier and then remove what's missing. See, that part is missing, right? Because when you added it, like when you made it one whole thing. Yes. Then it would have been there, right? If I do this... I make it one whole thing. Yeah. But that's not right? really what it is. That's what I, that's this. That's, yes. But then I'm missing that. those green bars. Now watch. There's those green yeah. bars that are missing. Okay. Okay. Are we going over any of this on Monday? Yeah, we'll go over I mean, no, I'm going to do the quiz when you walk in the damn door Monday. I don't care. Because the quiz has nothing to do with surface area. But then we'll be going over the rest of this. See, I did try this. It's a cylinder. Use the formula. No, I did. And then okay. um, I was checking a crystal. I mean, we didn't get a really good chance to talk about it because oh, we were I was figuring out this oh, one. Um, my answer was off by just like a little bit. Yeah, probably the decimal because you probably forgot to leave yeah. it as pi. Two, right. 2 pi r squared, so 9 times 2 is 18, and uh, height oh. was 
is eight. Yeah, see, you've made your R 1.5. I've given you the R of three. You made oh, it 1.5 there. Oh, I thought, yes, I thought. All right. Come on. Wait a minute. So I gave it. So it's three it's really three by eight. By eight. And three by eight is twenty-four pi. times two is forty-eight. So you got forty-eight pies there, and you got nine times two is eighteen pies there. Forty-eight and eighteen pies is sixty-six pies. Um. How many? You said sixty-eight pies. Sixty-six pies. 66 Forty-eight pies? and twenty. Oh, I was 68. right. Sixty-eight. Yeah, you had Wait, sixty-six I, pie. But I didn't do it the same you way. Forgot the pie. I don't know what you did there. Because I got. Oh, I multiplied twenty-one by the um, the pie symbol. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't either. Um, you could always leave it like that too, couldn't I, you? Well, no, because you would combine your like terms because they're both pies, right? It would be like saying six x and five x. And leaving it as that. No, that's 11 X. Okay, because of the pi, and yeah. it's not the same. Okay. Okay. Next. Hello. Hello. How are you? Terrific. Cool. I have a question. No kid. Yeah. You're not here to talk. What? Maybe just. <laughs> okay, let's talk. I'm just kidding. So, it was about the conversion. Yeah. So, I'm just wondering. Mm. I'll put it right here. So, could you just explain? How to get the decimal yeah, out the of there? Decimal thing, it just right. me. So you ended up with when you did the math. This is when you did the math and you punched it into your calculator. You ended up with forty-five point three 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 yes. three 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 full screen. Okay, that is a rational number. As a fraction, it's one third, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have 45 and one-third of a yard, yes? Yes. So you have 45 yards, and then there's one-third of a yard left over. Okay. So what do yards break down into? To feet. To feet. Mm -hmm. So you need to convert by that last bit of yards to feet. Okay. So one-third times, I want feet. So feet oh, on top, feet. yards on the bottom, one yard is three feet. Right? Now multiply. One and one, cancel, 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 cancel. I'm left with one. So one third of a yard equals one foot. So it is 45 yards, one foot. Okay. Because one third of a yard is one foot. Okay? Okay. That's it. But what if you were to get like multiple decimals? Then you would do the same thing. So let's say you got 45 and give me any two digits. 0.36. Okay, point no, three. Point four five. Great, point four five yards, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know that's forty five yards, and you're left with this point four five of a yard. Yards break down into feet, so I need feet over yards. One yard is three feet. It's a multiply situation. Point oh. four five times three. Okay. If you do point four five times three, point four five times three you get 1.35. Mm -hmm. So you have 45 yards, one foot, okay. 1.35 feet. Now, feet break down into inches. So it should be 0.35 of a foot, and I want inches, 12 inches, one foot, 0.35 times 12. Then you get 4.2, so one foot, four inches and then we'd stop okay. oh so you don't have to like break no because you don't break there is there's no nothing, measurement smaller no than inches, inches just fractions of an inch which 0.2 i believe it was two tenths of an inch is one fifth of an inch so you just want to see that we understand yep how it works. okay yep cool carry on Thank so you. My question was, do you watch anime? And if you have, have you seen Assassination Classroom? No, I haven't. I do not watch, I haven't watched anime since I was a little kid. I watched Robotech when I was a little kid. You would, it's on Netflix. It's like 1980s anime. Okay, yeah, I didn't watch that. Um, my son watches a bit of a couple of shows. Um, Hundred and one Dalmatians, but there's only not a hundred and one. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Maybe the little dots are like the souls of the dead Dalmatians. No. Where do you get cold ties? Uh, have been collected.
collecting ties since 1998. Okay. Some well, come from um, students. This came from a girl. If Not a student. I shouldn't have said girl. This came from a woman who I, Share if I wasn't married, would have been a girlfriend. She liked me that way. But I was married. And I did not like her that way. But you still like her. Why not? It's a tie. It's got nothing to do with that. Anyways, if you were you're gonna much. have a, you're gonna have boyfriends that give you gifts in your life that you might break up with. You're gonna throw out all their gifts. No, she, she's gonna immediately find her soulmate if you get married. Right? She'll, Are you? She'll she'll allow it. No. Exactly. Okay, Selena. Oh right, yeah. If you ever do watch assassination classes, you remind me of Koro Sensei. Koro Sensei. Koro. Koro Sensei. Yeah. All right. Can I have a peach? If there's a peach left there, you can have a peach. 